Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're going to investigate how to detect bubbles, irrational exuberance, and explosive behavior in various financial markets using a simple and intuitive statistical test that is based on the logic of augmented Dicke Fuller unit root test. And uh, bubbles and uh, explosive behavior are quite typical of financial markets in 2020 and especially 2021. And it all started perhaps with the well-known GameStop saga that we have got a separate video on, so check this out if you're interested in GameStop predominantly. However, in spring 2021, this bullish sentiment of retail investors has perhaps spread almost completely onto cryptocurrency markets, with the most notable victim or benefactor, depending on how you look into that, of such bullish rallies being Dogecoin, whose market capitalization has increased by a factor of hundreds and uh, at uh, the highest point of the rally exceeded the capitalizations of such well-known tech companies as Facebook or Twitter. And today we're going to apply the test developed by Philips and Yu and Philips et al. to the prices of Dogecoin to see if this rally has been almost fully irrational or there is something more to it. And uh, we'll use a simple Python script that's built over here to apply this test. And the packages that we'll use today are NumPy and Pandas, as usual, to work with arrays and data frames, respectively, Yahoo Finance, the Y Finance package, to retrieve uh, historical coin prices from Yahoo Finance, Stats Models API, which is very useful to run regressions, that are basically the center point of estimating Dicke Fuller tests. And to visualize our results, we'll use Matplotlib PyPlot and import it as BLT. And uh, we'll download uh, historical Dogecoin prices starting uh, 1st of September 2020 and ending uh, mid June 2021, so uh, roughly nine months worth of data. Uh, and we'll uh, download it using the Yahoo Finance package. And now we have to discuss the Dicke Fuller test that's used to detect bubbles, developed by Philips and you and Philips et al. And uh, the abbreviation it goes for generally is BSADF, that stands for Backwards Sub Augmented Dicke Fuller Test. Backwards and sub are quite easy to understand in this context. You are not only estimating the Dicke Fuller test for the whole sample, as you usually do to test for unit roots and independence of stock price increments or returns, but you are estimating it on uh, backwards uh, rolling subsamples across your whole sample to date stamp the bubbles and not only detect them. And uh, the econometric concept behind detecting bubbles with augmented Dicke Fuller has to do with the right tail of the Dicke Fuller T distribution or the tau distribution as it is alternatively called. Most commonly, when testing for independence or stationarity of increments that is uh, very commonly applied in market efficiency studies, you are concerned with the left tail of Dicke Fuller distribution. If the T statistic you obtain from a Dicke Fuller test or augmented Dicke Fuller test falls uh, beyond the critical value on the left hand side, you can reasonably assume that the price increments or returns are stationary and everything is. Uh, consistent with the efficient market hypothesis. However, if you look at the right-hand side of such distribution, you can see when the return generating process is explosive, when positive price increments lead to even higher positive price increments, and uh, that, by definition, constitutes a bubble or explosive behavior in uh, price increments or returns. And that is the logic of the BSADF, the backward sub-augmented Dicke Fuller. And uh, why is the augmented test used um, in comparison to the simple test? Well, the augmented Dicke Fuller test is handy in terms of 
um, even in out short-term dependence in returns and filtering out that to uh, leave just the longer term explosive behavior that can uh, propagate bubbles on stock markets and cryptocurrency markets at, as well. And the uh, parameter that is quite important for the BSADF is the R0 parameter, which is basically the smallest increment, smallest subsample that you will consider to estimate augmented Dickey Fuller tests on. And uh, most commonly, it is defined as a proportion of the total sample, which is here um, corresponding to the length of the prices array over here. And uh, one of the most common specifications is to select your R0 as 10%, so 0.1, of the length of your sample, the number of observations in your total sample. And uh, to filter out short-term dependence of returns, which is again, very important for cryptocurrencies in particular, but also quite relevant for stock markets and small stocks, such as GameStop as well, we are looking at the augmented Dickey Fuller test with three lags. So we'll filter out some short-term autocorrelation and uh, just leave the explosive behavior that we can then test against the right tail critical value of the uh, augmented Dickey Fuller distribution. And that has been estimated already using bootstrapping by Phillips et al. in 2015. And for R0 equal to 10%, the critical value of the right-hand side uh, tau distribution, the Dickey Fuller T distribution, is 1.49. So when we encounter explosive behavior, we will compare our Dickey Fuller statistic with 1.49. And if it exceeds 1.49, we can reasonably assume that uh, at 5% with 95% certainty, uh, our bubble is there. So we reject the null hypothesis of no explosive behavior in favor of the alternative hypothesis that there is bubble-like behavior in the uh, prices dynamics. And uh, to make our test more robust, as uh, prices of Dogecoin spend multiple sorts of magnitude during our sample period, we apply the natural log to our prices to get log prices, and then our differences, our increments in log prices, can be naturally interpreted as log returns. That makes our test more resilient, more robust to estimations in varying uh, windows. And then we can calculate our array of backwards sub-augmented Dickey Fuller test statistics. And those would be suprema, so maxima, of augmented Dickey Fuller statistics estimated on variant subsamples defined by our R0 and our uh, number of observations N. And we'll move uh, across uh, all potential subsamples leading up to a particular date in our uh, range and estimate all possible Dickey Fuller test statistics using the uh, number of lags we specified here uh, and the usual. Um, T stat from the uh, Dickey Fuller test. By the way, if you're interested how to estimate the usual uh, augmented Dickey Fuller test without this uh, backwards sub procedure, this is a very common technique in market efficiency studies. We have got a video on that, so check this out if you're interested in just the plain simple augmented Dickey Fuller test. But here we're using this logic to then inform our uh, synthetic statistic that is built uh, from the maximum of Dickey Fuller statistics in a particular subsample. So here, our X, so our independent variables, uh, are the lagged log prices. Uh, and uh, we also use a loop here to augment this um, data frame of X uh, with lagged um, log returns, with lagged increments of log prices over here. And our Dependent variable is quite intuitively the uh, log price increments, so log returns, and we regress them on our log prices, which is the uh, variable of interest, and uh, the lag increments, which are control variables to filter out short-term dependence and uh, uh, get left only with uh, this more long-term bubble-like explosive behavior. And then we specify a regression using the OLS function from the uh, stats models API package. And we uh, estimate it uh, based on our dependent variable Y and our independent variable uh, X, which is our uh, X naught, um, lagged 
uh, log prices and our uh, lagged increments over here. So this is basically a data frame that we then modify by adding a constant term as well using the function stats models API add constant. And then we fit this regression and the only uh, parameter we are interested in is the Dickey Fuller T stat. So we uh, append our uh, ADFS um, array, which is augmented Dickey Fuller statistics data frame uh, with a T stat, which is a ratio between the uh, parameter with index one, which is the second parameter, so constant, and then X naught. So this is the parameter we are interested in. And then we divide it by this parameter's standard error, BSE, retrieves standard errors of your coefficients. So this allows us to calculate and uh, store the T stats we're interested in. And then we are uh, appending our backward sub augmented Dickey Fuller array uh, with the maximum of um, augmented Dickey Fuller T stats we have calculated for a particular subsample, uh, which is basically uh, tweaking our subsample range and uh, retrieving only the maximum of those. And then we can visualize our results uh, by plotting our backward sub augmented Dickey Fuller statistics and the dates. Here uh, I am modifying the label size of our X values because those are dates and can be quite bulky if you leave the default label size. And uh, we also visualize it by plotting the uh, critical value to see when exactly does our uh, right-hand side uh, Dicke Fuller statistic exceed the critical value of 1.49. And then we can also print the dates when the bubbles were detected, when the uh, right-hand side Dicke Fuller statistic exceeded the critical value to date stamp the bubbles to see when Dogecoin was suffering from irrational exuberance, when the bubble phase was most severe. And we can run this code and uh, it has already downloaded the data as we can see from here. And it will take some time to calculate the uh, statistic because here we've got quite a bit of loops to uh, calculate all the Dickey Fuller test stats. And that is why this procedure is most efficiently implemented using a Python script and not something like an Excel spreadsheet because there you would have to do a lot of estimations in different sheets. So here Python actually comes to the rescue. So we'll wait for another minute and then I'll be back with you when the results are calculated. And the code has just completed the calculations. So from the chart over here, we can see the dynamics of the backward sub augmented Dickey Fuller test statistic across our sample period. Note that we do not start from 1st of September 2020 as you might have anticipated. We're starting uh, at some point in October, simply because the first date we can estimate our test is R0, as that's the smallest subsample we are interested in. And here we see the evolution of the test statistic across time and how it relates to the critical value of 1.49 in orange over here. We see four notable bubble episodes over here and the date stamping uh, is executed over here with dates when the statistic exceeded the critical interval, uh, the critical value plotted over here. And uh, perhaps the most um, important bubble phase for our purposes is the one in April that lasted four consecutive days from 13th of April 2021 uh, until 16th of April 2021. And that uh, verifies the fact that there has been a irrational exuberance associated with the appreciation of Dogecoin. And that has been also uh, verified by the market itself, as a lot of this uh, bullish uh, movement has been wiped out by successive uh, depreciation of uh, Dogecoin prices that coincided with uh, some bearish uh, action uh, at cryptocurrency markets uh, overall. And that's all there is for estimating and date stamping bubbles on any financial markets that you are interested in. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I made it to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, economics you would like me to record. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.